Brian with King Grizzly. And today let's take a look at aligning content inside of columns, especially, but also inside of sections. Just we're not going to look at everything possible here, but we're going to look at some of the basics that pretty much gets the job done for most websites. So, so how do we align content um, with each other and inside of containers? So first off, I'll click on this this section. Um, that, you know, when you add a new section inside of Elementor, um, you get this sort of wrapper container and you can put things inside of it like another intersection. And the section by default will have its own column, right? Now, if I chose a two column section or three, like if I add one of these, it's got three columns, right? The one I'm using here in this demo, it's just got the one column inside of it. And by the way, I, uh, I grabbed this from Envato Elements, which is a really cool plugin has has some premium stuff you can have to be a member to get we actually have a membership but there's a lot of free stuff like blocks and things you know blocks of logos i can just add them i definitely recommend it you can even pull in photos um, it's really cool so we're members we like to use the photos and um, some of their other graphic assets but if nothing else get the free plugin um, it's a great way to learn and see how they put stuff together it's not always in my opinion perfect but it's, it's a good way to learn, and if you need to build something fast, it really helps. Um, so anyway, if we click on this section container, we've got some options for how things are, are positioned. So if we were, now this is just referring to this column inside of this. So I could say top, I could say bottom, I could even stretch the thing, which won't, I don't believe have an effect here. Now, if I click on the columns inside, like the column itself inside the intersection and I choose to align it, I could say bottom. And what happens is that will cascade down into these inner columns, which is interesting. I could then go click on one of those and actually override that. Now this looks pretty bad, right? One's in the top and this one's kind of tall and this one's on the bottom. So, but I could override individually or I could go default. What's interesting is if you set, if you set an alignment on this container one, some of these other column settings don't work. So if I click on this one and I want to try one of these interesting space between, space around, nothing happens. But if I go back to this container column and I'd say just default, suddenly this one is doing what I had hoped. And, and these are some more recent options, these space between, space around, space evenly. So instead of top, you now these kind of stagger, and it actually, to be honest, this looks this looks pretty good, right? Um, but we notice that um, the buttons aren't really aligned <laughs> left to right. If, if you wanted that, um, you can click on the column and fiddle around with the space evenly, space between. I tend to just kind of experiment and see what I like. Um, I think space between is pretty good. That one we didn't see much of a difference because it's already the tallest. So check that out. Um, depending on your preference, right? That, that's kind of cool. That sort of lines up our buttons and our text here. Um, if for some reason we, we really needed to, we could even move them all to the bottom. Um, I probably wouldn't do that. Um, so that's That'll get you a long ways with alignment. I'm going to undo a couple steps. I kind of like this, this space between. I might look at space evenly. So that's going to be a little more centered vertically. Um, and I think what will happen is if we do space evenly, they won't quite line up. See the buttons, they don't line up as well as when you do space, space between. I'm going to go back to that. So I kind of like that. Um, so those are some of the basics of vertical alignment. Then we also have some options for uh, horizontal alignment. So let me try to give a good example of this. Let me just say that our, our intersection here, that these, I want to delete one of these columns. So we've got this intersection. I limited the width of it, right? Now, if for some reason I wanted these to be off to the left, well, this is not, this is not working. So there's some horizontal alignment options we have. I'm going to click on that parent.
Now, nothing really happens. And that, you know, it's confusing, right? Like I, I thought, well, maybe some of this content would move over to the left, right? Or if I hit end, like, shouldn't it move to the right side? Well, we have to remember some of these things are like block items. So this, these headings, they're, they're hundred percent width, right? So they're not, they can't move to the start or the end because they're actually 100% width. So I, I find that this horizontal alignment tends to work best when you have something that's an inline element, and I'll show you what that means. So let's just say, instead of this sort of heading subtitle type thing, let's say we wanted an icon next to this, this heading. So I go to my widgets. Uh, I tend to search for things. It's faster. Icon. I drag an icon in here. Okay, so I've got this icon, which I probably don't want it to be green. I'm going to make it, make it white, but I don't really want it on top. I would like it in front of our services. Well, if you go to click on the icon and click on advanced, go to custom positioning. This is more recent as well. You can set the thing to be full width, inline, or custom. So I might just try inline. Ah, and now we see it goes to the start. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on our services, go to advanced, Go to custom positioning. I'm going to set the width to inline. Check it out. Now they're on the same line, so that's cool. Now when I go to this sort of parent container, actually I did it on this one. Um, I'm going to turn that off because we want to go to the column that contains these two, right? Well, horizontal line, I want them to be centered. Check that out. But you know, if for some reason you needed to, you could say end, start. Um, you could fiddle around with this sort of space between, space around. It's very, very powerful. Um, so much easier than writing the CSS, right? So I'm going to center them. And then what I tend to do is, uh, you know, I'll click on this icon. Um, you can choose a vertical alignment, top, middle, bottom. I'm going to go middle. Click on our services, do the same thing. Now, I probably have, for my theme, some styling that's coming in there that's messing up the typography here could be I guess it's not the line height yeah I think I might have some padding or margin nope look there's a margin there get rid of it okay cool so now they're lined up I want maybe I want a little more space so I could click on the star I could click advance I might add some margin around it so maybe I'll, I'll put like 10 pixels on the left 10 on the right just to be consistent use a power trick, I'm going to right click that, copy, right click the text, paste style. Now they both have 10 pixels of margin on both sides. Cool, right? So as a refresher, you know, I clicked on these elements, went to advance, went to custom positioning, set them to inline, and I vertically aligned them. And then what's cool is you can change that. So if you get down to the phone size and you don't want that to happen, you could click on phone and choose a different setting. Um, so I think that's probably a pretty good just intro to aligning some things. Uh, this inline custom positioning trick or custom, you can actually choose a percentage. Like I could make the star take up 30% of the width and the heading take up 70. I mean, that's a huge trick. And then just knowing that you can click on the parent sort of container and tell the horizontal alignment to either be start, center, end, or these sort of spacing options. And then, you know, secondly, you can actually align things vertically by clicking on columns and fiddling around with the alignment. And this space between, you know, tends to be a good one for lining up, say, your buttons when you don't have the exact same amount of, of copy. Um, so hopefully that is useful. And if there's any other questions people have about Elementor, we'd be more than happy to make some more videos um, or, you know, to figure things out because, you know, we, we're still learning stuff. Um, pretty much every day. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.